Hello everyone, Jim Varakobian here with 1000 Jim, and we're doing the recap video of the round number two of the US Women's Chess Championship 2022. In this round, the highlight game is going to be the game between Nazi Pakidze, former US Women's Champion, against Megan Lee. This was a very interesting game. Megan managed to win this game, some nice tactics. But let's go over the results for this round. So we had uh, Suzuki draw against Cervantes, Alice Lee won against Tukar Janova. Jennifer Yu won against Yan Ryang. Satonsky drew Abrahamian. Crush drew against Foyzer. And Wu uh, won against Aswaran. So, but the highlight game is the game Pakidze with white pieces 2354 against 2226. You think white is the favorite? 130 points ahead. But the result, it's going to be surprising. Convincing victory for Megan Lee here. Knight f3, knight c6. Let's see how it happened. So we have the scotch. And there are basically two lines here. Black can go bishop c5 here. And for this position, takes queen f6. Putting pressure on c6 and f2. Or try to play the move. Um, try to play the move. Uh, knight f6, which was played in the game. Now take. You could also play this move. Knight c3, but then you're going to have to Look at these lines. These lines are just kind of drawish. Takes, takes, bishop d3, castles, castles, d5, and just it leads to more or less equal positions here. So let's back it up. So we have uh, the white goes for the most uh, no, typical line, knight c6. Seven, queen two, knight d5, and now uh, we play the move h4. The point of this h4 is that uh, sometimes you can play put the bush bishop on g5 and also gives the option to bring the rook into the game. So it's a it's a fashionable move. I know it's kind of a hard move to understand, but it just it allows this rook h3 idea and also at some positions you have the bishop g5 10p. Queen d6. Knight d2, knight b4, knight, knight b4 it's not the best move, a5 is a better move here that will allow the move bishop a6 here, activating the dark square bishop. And when I play knight b4, knight f3, bishop a6, activating the bishop, and now move c4 makes a lot of sense, trying to shut down the bishop, c5, a3, knight c6, and now bishop uh, to d2. Idea is to try to put the bishop on c3. h6. Bishop c3. And if white can finish the development, he will. You know, she will certainly be better here. Long castle, g3. Um, you know, Pakidze is playing very well. I like her position. Now I just need to play the move b3. Bishop h3, castle. This is going to be a significant advantage here for Nazi Pakidze. Bishop b7. Now this is the critical moment. She plays the move knight d2, which I don't know. If, I don't know if I like it. I mean, there is there is still development needs to be done here. So there are two things I will be looking here. I will be looking at the move b3 with the bishop h3 castle, or I'll be looking at the long castle here. I will look in, I will, I'll be looking at this ideas here. So if castle, let's say uh, g5, trying to get some counterplay. Queen c2. G4, knight d2, knight takes c5. Actually, knight takes c5, it's very interesting. It runs into the move f4. Attacking the knight, on passant, bishop h3, another tempo on the queen. Yeah, this is just becoming a problematic. And now queen f6, attacking this, and threatening attacking the knight and also threatening mate here and if you play yeah you can move the knight you're pinned so yeah you just you're just losing a piece here yeah this is kind of hard to find as this moves because you wouldn't think uh yeah it's it's, it's hard to find this ideas i have to admit uh the move b3 is also probably not as great but it's okay here g5 bishop g2 yeah i kind of like this 
92. Yeah, this is great. I want to play the move B3 here because I feel like I need a move like that to tighten up my defense. So either B3 or Long Castle here would have given Nazi an advantage. She played 92 and now immediately Rook A1, Bishop H3, F5. And here we see a very hard move to explain here because she did everything right. She got her pieces out. It's time to get that safety, okay? Castle ensured the safety. So this was time to do that. And... Um, d5, queen f3. Now putting pressure here and putting pressure simply on d5 as well. And fg6, bishop g2, putting more pressure on d5 here. And that would be a very nice um, position for white. I like uh, the chances here for Pakidzi. Takes. Take. Now, this is just uh, definitely a, a favorable endgame. You might not be able to win it fully, but you have the bishops, you have a better pawn structure here. So, bishop g2, yeah, that's just a blunder, basically. Basically, oversight. You don't want to do that. You got a castle in this position. So, she played bishop g2. That allowed the move knight takes e5. And the point is now, if you take with the queen, simply take take and you get it see the problem here is being cut in the middle of the board with d6 and simply take losing the bishop so bishop f6 <sighs> um if you take with a bishop Bishop f6, castles, queen takes c5, queen takes c5, rook takes c5. And black is, black is just uh, better here. Extra pawn. So yeah, but just one move basically. One move. It's very pity when you uh, make one bad move and you get into big trouble like this. Again, still had to castle here, I think. It was important to castle and nope. No, gotta get that king safety. Gotta get that king safety. Down a pawn, but it's it's still a fight here. Still there's some fight here because black king is a little bit weak and it's possible. It's possible to generate some counterplay here. Okay. It's not gonna be easy, but you know, you can you can try. You can definitely try to do that here. Okay, there are some chances I see I still see here, but instead she went for f4. That's a bad move because now the king is gonna be very, very weak. D6. She tried to castle here. Maybe a long castle would be a little bit better, but at the moment it's pretty much gone. Now here e4 this is a strong move it totally shuts down the bishop on g2 now the knight on d2 cannot move anywhere b2 his pawn is under attack so it's just going to be a big big problem now okay b1 queen d7 trying to get the queen on d3 attacking the knight as well and now the point is you can never really take the pawn because if you do you're going to run into a check and picking up the knight on c5 so we played Knight a5, but that drops the pawn on g3. So I'm not sure maybe queen takes d3 should have been played first. But same issue again. If you take on c5, you're running into bishop d4 check. If you go to a5, simply takes on g3. So it's going to be problematic. So um, the game pretty much is over now. Queen takes g3, knight c6, rook e6. It's important to be able to play with the bishop d4 check here. Knight e5 takes another pawn. Knight f3, and yeah, it can take because the e8 is hanging, but after this move now your knight is hanging and rook is getting ready to play rook d2, and here um, Nazi Pakitsa just resigned, and this was a little bit of an upset because Nazi is a very strong player, she's a solid player, she's not as active, but she has won this tournament before, and she had finished second place, so she always pretty much does really well in this tournament, but you know, she's... She hasn't been as active in the last couple of days, so it's definitely difficult uh, uh, to play against some of these young players who are a little bit more active. So a most important thing I see, uh, we see a critical mistake right here made by her because 
Opening was decently played, and she had to get her pieces developed and just to be able to get a comfortable position. But this bishop g2, you just can't afford to do that when your king is stuck in the middle of the board, okay? When your king is in the middle of the board, you got to get your pieces into the game here. Two good moves. Long castle is my favorite move here, and according to computer, it gives white a slightly better position. Or the move b3, which would have been fine too. Just try to... Uh, protect here but again long castle is, is is definitely the best move here to be able to get a comfortable position so yeah that's one blunder bishop g2 and after knight takes e5 this is a timely tactic here taking advantage of the fact that opponent king is stuck is stuck is in the middle of the board okay so it's stuck and uh, uh it's just going to be very difficult to do anything probably white has a little bit of compensation here maybe even just Castling immediately would have been the best, like knight c4. You have queen f3, d5. You say, okay, I'm down two pawns, but I do have a, a you know, a little bit more active bishops, so might be able to generate some counterplay here. Rook e5, doubling up the rooks to put some pressure. But unfortunately for Nazi, that didn't happen, and the position opened up pretty quickly here and. Uh, the fact the king was stuck in the middle middle, uh, middle of the board became a huge problem. Here again, castling still gives some chances, but after this f4, d6, yeah, it's pretty much gone here. There's not much you can do here. The dark scores are going to be just really weak for the rest of the game. And uh, Megan Lee went on to convert this position very, very comfortably. So again, early, early wins are always very important. It gives confidence to the players and early losses are bad for the confidence in a sense that you just feel like, you know, I'm not playing that well yet, you know, when I'm going to be able to see the board a little bit better. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this game. Make sure to subscribe to 1000 GM YouTube channel where we bring you content from all the big events happening in St. Louis or Los Angeles. Thank you, everyone for watching the recap number two of the u.s women's championship we'll be back with the uh, uh, recaps uh, three and four coming up very shortly thank you and see you next time bye bye